Okay, this is my overview for The Amazing Spider-Man Volume 1 Omnibus. Now, this is the 2019 reprint, and I'll show you that when I show you the legal page. Front cover has Amazing Fantasy 15. There's the spine. And there's the back cover with all the covers. And this collects Amazing Fantasy 15, The Amazing Spider Man 1 to 38, Annual 1 to 2, Strange Tales Annual 2, and The Fantastic Four Annual Number 1. I've just noticed it says printed in China, and I heard Omar talking about something the other day. I thought that was quite interesting because he was saying the curved spines come from China and when they shut down the Chinese printers because of the coronavirus they had to go to another country, I can't remember what it was, Korea, Singapore, Taiwan, something and they, they print the flat spines and that's why the JMS Volume 2 Omnibus has flat spine because it was printed in a different country. I did not know that so thanks Omar. So there's the front flap. There's the creators. You'll find the front flap actually changes based on uh, what printing you have because this is the 2019 printing this says 50 years previous versions say different things there's the board it's that matte black which it's okay but i prefer the old faux leather nothing on the back now this is the standard cover and I really hate the way Marvel do this because it gives me a fucking headache. Volume 1 of these books tends to be the original 60s Silver Age cover of this. Fantastic. That's easy, easy enough, right? But then when you get to Volume 2 and onwards, the 60s Silver Age cover becomes a variant cover. If you look at the X-Men reprints that are coming out this year, Volume 1, the standard cover, is the, um, what's it called, Supersized X-Men? The original cover from the 70s. Volume 2, the standard cover, is the recolored one of whatever issue it is. But the variant cover is the very original cover, and that's really annoying. I wish they would just print them all with the original covers. So there it is next to volume two. Volume two is a little bit discolored on the logo because it's old. And there's volume four. And they all match up nicely. And this right here shows you why artist runs creator runs are just fucking stupid I mean why do you need them why not just do a volume with multiple creators and multiple writers you know you've got amazing sorry spider-man adjectiveless spider-man split up into like three volumes based on creators and just do spider-man volume 1 1 to 38 volume 2 39 to, I don't know, 70 or 80 or something. As you can see, I'm a fan of the Omnibus with the classic covers. And I'm very lucky I got that one cheap, less than £100 out of print. And I managed to get Volume 4 from CheapGraphicNovels.com. I got it from their eBay store because the if you go on their site... Shipping to the UK is very expensive. It's more than the cost of the actual omnibus itself, which is ridiculous. And I don't blame them. That's what they're being charged, you know. But if you look on their eBay store, 
you'll find that they ship through eBay's global shipping program. So you can get it shipped to the UK for about £20 rather than £100. And that's exactly what I did with this. So I'm very pleased I got that. And you never know, if, if you see something on CheapGraphicNovels.com but they don't have it on their eBay store, send them a message and say, would you put this on because I want to buy it but I want it shipped through eBay's GSP because it's cheaper and they might do it for you. I highly doubt they'll say no to a sale. So there you go, there's the comparison. I don't have volume three, I'm hoping to get it soon. I've got my eye on one and yes, it is the direct market variant because fuck getting the standard cover when I've already got all of these. <laughs> So, you've got nice white pages, credit pages, contents, foreword by the late great Stan Lee, written in 1987, and then you get Amazing Fantasy 15, or part of it anyway, and I love the way they've touched up the art, it's, it's so much cleaner. There's no spots anywhere. The black actually looks black now rather than like seeing where brush strokes went over black on black. Now it just looks black the way it's supposed to, so it's more in line with later comics. And this is Spider Man issue one, where <laughs> in an effort to impress people, he starts a fight with the Fantastic Four, I think maybe that's later on and this also has the introduction of uh, John Jameson who's an astronaut at this point and it's also got the chameleon and they just didn't know what to do with John Jameson throughout his entire run on Spider-Man just no clue and there's Spider-Man attacking the Fantastic Four because he's a bit of a dick in this an absolute dick. Like, there's an issue where Johnny Storm is having a get together with some friends. A bit of a private party. This might be it. Yeah, I think it is. And Spider Man just, just turns up and he's a cock. An absolute cock. The Human Torch lives in Glenville, just outside of the city. If I can convince him of my innocence, I'll have a chance. Uh, maybe not. This isn't the issue. Oh, maybe it is. I have read this, but I can't remember. But there's another one where he turns up and deliberately crashes his party. God, Steve Ditko. His art is an acquired taste, but you get used to it after a while. I, I, when I buy the English Spider-Man comics, I could never read. Sometimes you got classic issues in the back, and I could never ever get into the classic Ditko stuff because it it just looks so bad. But where it's all being cleaned up here. It, it, it's much easier on the eye. There you go. John Favreau wrote a letter to Amazing Spider Man. And that is issue. This is 11, so that's issue 10. Although it's not the same John Favreau that was in. Um, the Spider-Man movie and the Avengers. It's a different John Favreau. That letter was printed about four years before that John Favreau was born. I just think it's ironic. Now this omnibus has some... Um, it's, it's got the most incredible run I've ever seen of introducing a rogues gallery. That's how far I am in the book. Like if if you look at the covers, who do we have? So issue one was the chameleon, 
Issue 2 was the Vulture. Issue 3 was Doc Ock. Issue 4 was the Sandman. That's Strange Tales. That's Fantastic Four. Doctor Doom makes an appearance. Got the Lizard. Vulture again. Oh, that's the one with the robot. Electro. The Enforcers. Doc Ock returns. Mysterio. The Green Goblin. The Sinister Six. I mean, there are just... There's the Molten Man at the bottom. Craven. <laughs> it's just insane. In, like, just the, this top row, first 10 or 12, whatever it is, there were, like, seven or eight classic villains introduced that went on to be a staple of Spider-Man. That's, that's crazy. Scorpion, there's another one. And I, I do think some of these designs are dated, but, you know, it was the 60s. 50 years have gone by. Things have changed. And I am so slow at getting through this. I bought this when it came out, August or whatever it was. And... <laughs> That's how far I am. It's a thousand page book and I'm on just over 400 pages because I do find it hard to read. You'll see on the pages just how dialogue heavy everything is, particularly the earlier stuff. Um, Stanley, look there, like there's just non-stop fucking writing and Ditko's art is good. Like look at Jameson there, the crazy eyes. It's just so heavy on the dialogue. And the problem is it's dated dialogue. He says things like picks and through. T-H-R-U. And teen dash ager. <laughs> and it, the dialogue is so dated and there's so much of it. It really is difficult for me to read. Totally respect it. Totally respect it. I'm not going to badmouth it and say it's shit. But just for me, as someone who grew up reading comics in the 90s, it was, or is, hard for me to get through. So you have to pace yourself. That's pretty cool. I love the webs under the arms. I love when they do that. So if you, if you have difficulty reading Silver Age stuff, just pace yourself. Read one issue a day, or one issue a week, or half an issue a day, something like that. And eventually you'll get through it. Because it is worth it, absolutely worth it. I also read all the letters pages because they are really interesting. When people say fandoms are ruined these days, I mean, they really should read some of these letters from the 60s because you've got people writing in saying, Spider-Man shouldn't do this, Spider-Man should do this. Why'd you do that? Have him team up with the torch. And then you've got somebody writing in on the very same page saying, don't make him team up with anyone. Don't give him a love interest. Don't make him do that. And <laughs> it's like nobody can agree what Spider-Man should have become. And there's there's a lot of sass as well when, like Stanley or whoever, when they reply to the letters, they will, there's Gwen. Um, they will give back as good as they get, and it's really funny sometimes. Classic Spider-Man story there. That he had to relive in um, Happy Birthday, which is in the JMS Omnibus. Volume 1. I think the worst thing about Steve Ditko's art is... His figures are very flat, and somebody wrote in, and I didn't notice it until I read the letter, and it, it said, why are all his characters' faces square? <laughs> and, then, and then once you read that, you, you can't unnotice it. That looks like Matt Murdock. Square head. Square head. Square head. Where are we going? 
square head, square head, square head, square head, square head, square head. <coughs> Once you notice it, you 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 can't unnotice it. I I think it was limited by the size of the panels because when you get bigger stuff like this, it's nowhere near as bad. This is just over a thousand pages, I think. So in the back you get more letters, afterwords, inks, pencils, and oh, I love this stuff, you get all the old, old adverts. I don't know what Marvel Tales is, but you get a load of covers for it. Maybe it's reprintings, because that that looks recolored to me. That Green Goblin, that is definitely recolored. So I, I think Marvel Tales may have been like reprinting classic tales. I don't know. And that's the variant cover by Alex Ross. The only Alex Ross cover I like is the one that's on Daredevil Volume 1, the Omnibus. So there you go, there's my overview for The Amazing Spider-Man Volume 1 Omnibus. And the next overview I'll do will probably be The Amazing Spider-Man Volume 2 Omnibus.